Let's explore some of the most common misconceptions when it comes to retirement planning in Australia. Hi there, if you're new here, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore, working with Australians all over the world to master their money and plan for their retirement. Now we hear so many misconceptions when it comes to retirement planning. So in this video, I'd like to explore five of the most common and dispel some of those myths and actually provide you with some hopefully useful information, data and insights. So let's dive straight in to the first one. Now, the first most common myth in Australia when it comes to retirement planning is people believing that they can solely rely on the age pension or that they should, for some reason, spend all of their money that is not their own home so that they can get the full government pension in Australia. Now, the full age pension, which is subject to both asset and income testing, that is means testing to determine the amount that you're eligible for, the maximum pension per fortnight for an individual is $1,116 at present. And for a couple, it's $1,682. Now, let's just multiply that out annually. That's a little over $29,000 or a little over $43,000 for a couple per year. Now, that might sound like a comfortable amount to live off, but it's certainly not going to allow you to travel overseas or necessarily even to travel domestically. So whilst there is no one size fits all, it's important to note that the age pension is designed to be a safety net, not to provide a comfortable retirement. So that's number one. Let's dive on to number two. Now, the most common second myth that we hear is that I can just save later. I've got plenty of time. I'll worry about retirement when I'm in my 40s. Or one that we get all too commonly is once I hit 50, that's the magic number to start saving and worrying about my retirement. And worrying is probably the key word there when we actually run the numbers. So let's just have a look at the compounding effect of starting saving earlier to reach that comfortable retirement number. So let's just say, that we want to hit a retirement nest egg figure of $2 million. At a 4% rate, that's gonna give us $80,000 per year to live on in our retirement. Now, if I'm starting with a base of nothing because I haven't been thinking about my retirement until now, and I've only got 10 years to save that amount of money, then every month, assuming that money is invested in equities in the stock market, I need to be saving just shy of $11,000 every month. Now, if we multiply that or extend that time period out to 20 years, that figure drops very quickly to 3,392. And if we started planning way ahead and started saving in our 30s, and over a 30 year period, I'd only need to contribute 1,342. So this idea that planning for retirement or saving for retirement is something you should only do later in your life is complete nonsense. And it is really in inhibiting a lot of people from actually saving and achieving that comfortable retirement lifestyle. Let's have a look at number three. Now, the third most common one is really down to the budget and people believing I won't need to spend as much money when I retire. We won't be paying rent. I won't be paying tax. I won't have the kids' school fees. But what a lot of people actually forget is that that 40, 50, 70, 80, 90 hours a week that you spend working and potentially traveling for work, which is very common for a lot of expats, is now gone. And that time should be filled with meaningful exercises, whether that be going to the gym or joining your local rotary club or traveling or consulting or doing something with that time. And chances are that will involve spending money. We also have health insurance premiums. We may want to replace cars. We need insurances. All of those other aspects that start to add up quite quickly. So while we may in fact spend less or maybe even more than we spend now in retirement, it's important to actually run your own numbers and work out how that actually compares to what we spend today. Let's have a look at number four. Now, myth number four, the common misconception is I believe I will just downsize my home 
and retire then. I'll have plenty, I'll downsize my home, move into something smaller, and I'll just live off the excess. Now, in some cases, that may be a perfectly viable strategy, but not always, because chances are you will be in the same boat as many others looking to do the exact same thing. So you might be selling the four bedroom, two bathroom, or five bedroom, three bathroom house on the quarter acre block to move into the smaller townhouse closer to the city, closer to amenities, closer to public transport, the shops, the cafes, to achieve that nice, comfortable lifestyle and in actual fact, we don't have a great deal left over from the property that we actually sold. So again, important to run your own numbers and work out what that scenario is actually going to look like based on what you think you would move into. Let's have a look at the fifth and final most common misconception when it comes to retirement planning in Australia. So the fifth and final misconception when it comes to retirement planning in Australia is believing that your superannuation is going to be enough. We've seen far too many statements where uh, you know, superannuation fund or investment fund providers will illustrate retirement incomes that you can live off based on various projections, but all too often the people reading them, the actual super fund members, don't understand the figures, the assumptions that are actually used to project those retirement income figures. So let's just say that you had a million dollars in superannuation by retirement, that might be able to comfortably generate you 40, 50, $60,000 a year when you're retired. Now that may be enough, it may not be. Of course, we need to run our own numbers. But given that the average superannuation balances at retirement in Australia are far lower than that million dollar figure, chances are superannuation alone is not going to be enough. So we need to think about our other investments, whether it's investment property generating rental income, it's cash in the bank generating interest, or it's external investment accounts that we're holding offshore or via various structures. Run our numbers, work out what's right for us, and don't simply assume that superannuation alone is going to be enough. So there you have it, five all too common misconceptions when it comes to retirement planning down in Australia. I hope that gives you a bit of food for thought, a few things to think about, chat about around the dinner table, but hopefully some food for thought in planning for a comfortable retirement for yourself. Thank you for tuning in. Drop me a note with any questions you've got. Do remember to like, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.